I'm shattered. I'm in tatters. I'm shattered. <clears throat> Hello, folks, and welcome to the Mr. Regley Show. I am your host, Mr. Regley. <laughs> It's the Mr. Ugly Show starring Mr. Ugly and the Human. I and my trusty helper, the Human, will be showing off different cool stuff the Human has collected, and we'll be telling you if it was worth collecting in the first place. And if it's something relatively recent, we'll tell you where you can get one of your own. Hi, folks. <sighs> Today, we have something new from something old that you may not even be aware of. Shattered Glass, Optimus Prime, Ratchet, and Ravage from the Transformers. Here are Shattered Glass, Optimus Prime, Ratchet, and Ravage. I know what you're thinking. Why is Prime grape flavored? And what's the deal with Ratchet's teal bits? Is he in a Miami Vice reboot? Or you may be wondering, ah, uh, isn't that Glit? Or if you're familiar with Shattered Glass, you may be thinking, it's about damn time. For anyone who wants or needs more detail on the Shattered Glass universe in the Transformers mythos, we're going to put up a card here to link you to Mr. Chris McFeely's excellent The Basics series episode he did on Shattered Glass. It answers all your questions. But we're going to give you a little bit of background here ourselves anyway. The Shattered Glass universe was created by Fun Publications for the official BotCon in 2008. The Decepticons in this universe were the good guys, and the Autobots were the bad guys. Yeah, you know, like that one episode of Star Trek, the original series, with the Mirror Universe and the goateed evil Spock. You know what I mean. In this universe, Optimus Prime was once a librarian named Optronics. By hook and by crook, he clawed his way to the upper echelons of Cybertronian society and founded the Autobots in order to wage war. He was dangerously unhinged adorning the walls of his fortress with the bodies of his enemies and carrying on conversations with the corpses. He frequently abused his own faction members and sometimes even executed them for seemingly minor infractions. You know, standard crazy stuff. Eventually, this universe's Unicron, as benevolent as the classic universe's Unicron was evil, healed Prime's shattered mind and remade him into Nova Prime. As Nova Prime, the artist formerly known as Optimus, fought for peace across the Shattered Glass universe. Now, Shattered Glass Ratchet is similarly the dark reflection of his classic universe self, and he still serves as the Autobot medic. However, Shattered Glass Ratchet is more of a mad scientist, adding, removing, and randomly replacing parts of wounded comrades at a whim. Although they do respect him, none of the Shattered Glass Autobots really want any treatment from their Ratchet. He also gets reformatted and reborn by Unicron, and assists Nova Prime in his quest for peace as an auto trooper, a sort of generic knight in Nova Prime's army. Hey, you know, interestingly, Shattered Glass Ratchet had a contingency plan in case of termination. When Unicron reformatted him, an automatic backup was loaded into a new body, and the old Dr. Giggles was reborn. So technically, there's two Shattered Glass Ratchets. Last but not least, we have Shattered Glass Ravage. He was created by Transformers superfan David Willis as a silly fan character. Willis even set up real-world social media accounts for the character and had him tweet and post to Facebook. Shattered Glass Ravage's personality is like that of a social media obsessed teenager. He speaks in texting style abbreviated short sentences with plenty of lolcat stuff thrown in and he clearly suffers from ADHD. The character became so popular that he became a part of official canon when he received a profile in the Collector's Club magazine. Official toys of Shattered Glass Ravage were eventually produced as BotCon exclusives. But as you can imagine, they were essentially recolors of existing Ravage toys. 
here we have the box for Duck Cat. This is actually Ocular Max's take on Glit. But since the color schemes are very similar, he is Shadow Glass Ravage to me. Old school tech specs and little transformation uh, photos like on the old G1 boxes. All right, here's what he looks like out of the package. He is, lo and behold, a cassette tape. It is an actually a life-sized 1-1 cassette tape, which is actually very cool. Some nice little artwork. The cassette box has this kind of uh, radar, spiral, audio, whatever, little design on it, which is nice. When you open it up, you can take him out as a cassette. And the instructions are here in the insert, which is, I think, pretty darn clever. All right, folks, and here is the box for our Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy. Uh, Hasbro selects here Shattered Glass Optimus Prime and Shattered Glass Ratchet. And this is uh, about as plain as packaging gets, folks. This is pretty standard plain Jane packaging for Generation Selects toys. Open it up here and you get this beautiful box interior. Here's our little guys in their beautiful box. You've got your Shattered Glass Optimus Prime there and your Shattered Glass Ratchet, along with Ratchet's little roof piece slash shield slash sled. Uh, slash rocket launcher. I guess it's got little rocket launchy bits depending on which way you put it on his arm. Got uh, Optimus's gun here, Ratchet's gun down here, Ratchet's little light bar. Why don't we get these guys out of here so we can take a better look at them. All right here we've got our group of shattered glass figures. Uh, obviously this one here, Shattered Glass Ravage, is not a Hasbro figure. He is pretty awesome but we're gonna set him off to the side for now. We'll talk about him later. Let's focus up on Ratchet and Prime here. Pretty cool. Uh, this is obviously just the Earthrise Prime mold in a different color. Um, not too many complaints about the truck mode. A little, little paint for the taillights would have been nice. But uh, considering how beautiful he is otherwise, I can't really complain. I love this kind of lemonade colored uh, translucent plastic for the windshield, the headlights, and the, the windows on the side. That's really nice touch. I like the way that looks with everything. Um, his truck mode holds together pretty well because uh, of some of the rotational joints. Sometimes the, the cab comes out kind of crooked. But, uh, you know, I really like it. Looks good. Looks good. Here's a closer look at some of the detail on him in there. He's got that beautiful kind of a, not quite a gunmetal gray for the vents, the bumper stripe going around the side. Uh, he's got kind of a dark gray for his thighs with that same gunmetal-ish gray for the tanks here. Silver for the hubcaps. And silver on the vents there on his leg. And he's upside down. Um, these tanks don't clip in anything when they open up, so while you're playing with them, you're going to invariably collapse the tanks by accident. It's a good looking little, little rolly truck there. He's got his singles here in the front, his dualies in the back, looking like a proper Peterbilt. Now our little friend over here, Ratchet, looks a lot like his little quasi-Toyota van from his original G1 toy. Uh, he suffers from the same feet sticking out the back as uh, Ironhide did, which this toy is based on. Uh, light bar is removable, although I don't know why you'd want to maybe make it a boomerang for him. I don't know. There's the back of his head in there in the cab. I have room for a couple of Diaclone figures in there if you want to put them in, if you have them. I don't know. It doesn't really add much to the toy, really, and you can't really get them out to play with them since the doors don't open. But there's room for him. If you got to put him in there, you can. Um, right now, I have his gun rattling around. I don't know if you can hear that. 
the rattle there. So I rattle him for the microphone. Uh, he's rattling around inside there because uh, I don't like seeing the gun on the outside of the vehicle so we can avoid it. Uh, instructions have you pegging it on the top here, but there's actually enough space in the gap between his legs to just tuck it inside uh, the van mode. So there you go. That's shattered glass ratchet, and they both roll really nicely, although this table's a little too slick to get all the wheels turning. Here you can see Shattered Glass Optimus is out of his little box and out on the table. And you can see he is a gorgeous shade of purple. He has these nice dark grays for his legs and his gun. Little dark gray details on the sides for his hands. The nice dark blue on his legs and his helmet. And the red for his eyes. I mean, it's Really, really gorgeous, and the, um, the kind of goldish yellow behind his front windows there, and the neon green for the vents in his helmet. He's just beautiful. He's super articulated. Uh, you know, the arms go all the way around. They've got this sort of kind of butterfly action due to transformation. He's got the swivel there, about 90 degrees at the elbow wrists rotate and the fingers open and close he's got a waist swivel and as you can see the tires are actually a part of his butt so his waist swivel is independent of the tires on his rear what look like hip skirts are in fact the hips themselves so he's got a nice range of motion there on the legs. Do the full splits, that transformation joint in there. Rotation at essentially the hip, we'll call it the thigh. He's got uh, over 90 degrees at the knees there. He's got no knee swivel, toes go up and down due to transformation as do the heels. And there's a decent amount of ankle tiltage. One thing to take note of here is that uh, because the gun folds up for storage, it has a tendency to pop up as you're posing him. As you can see right here, a little bit of finger pressure the wrong way and his gun is all bent and goofy. Oh, he's got an additional feature here. If you can get these open right from there. He does have a matrix and it does come out once you actually get it out, you can see that it is a purple with a clear little lemonade colored yellow part in the center. So a quick turnaround, you can see the back cleans up pretty nicely. Now I do not have the normal Earthrise Prime because I'm honestly kind of primed out as we will See probably in later episodes when I feature some of the many, many Optimus Primes in my collection. But uh, I like this one. This one's good. All right, let's take a look at Ratchet. ratchet shattered glass ratchet to be precise and this is a pretty good mold of ratchet it's um, based on the iron hide mold from war for cybertron siege that we would have seen last year i don't like how hollow his chest is 
wish there was maybe darker glass or something we could fill that in with. You could probably keep his gun in there, but that'd be weird. Um, his little shield part here can be turned around and it becomes a cannon if you slide it. Okay. Normally be like this. You slide it forward, little cannons come out. His shield can be held or it can be pegged in on his arm. You can have it go either way, your preference. Or if you want, you can give him a big old cape. I guess it looks more like he's carrying a surfboard on his back. Or if you really want to go for the surfboard on his back, look, <laughs> flip it over. And there he is, carrying a surfboard on his back. Okay, so Ratchet himself, he's got our 360 there. Due to transformation, his shoulders do go up and down a little bit. You've got your bicep swivel. That mushroom bag in there. 90 degrees at the elbow. He has 360 rotation on the wrists. His head is on a ball joint, up and down, a little side to side, a little quizzical. What do you mean you didn't want me to replace your hands with buzz saws? Uh, forward that far, back, all the way back. Very nice. A 90 degree bend at the knee. These little flaps on the side don't really peg in like they're supposed to, so they tend to flap around when you're moving them around. Might have grabbed my nose. Lots of ankle tilted, broken ankles. You get some decent action poses with his little gun there. It's pretty clean on the back. Got a big kind of hole there. His legs aren't that hollow, which is nice. Kind of cover up. Little shield back for the final pose here. All right, I like it. I like it a lot. Here is Docat. This is Oculomax's take on Glit, but I call him Shadow Glass Ravage. This is what he looks like. He's a very nicely detailed little, little kitty here. Since it's supposed to be Glit, these little missiles on his hips would actually be canisters filled with medical supplies. Love his yellow eyes. His mouth opens that far. Oh my god! <laughs> and, uh, his head can turn a little bit. A little up and down on the shoulders or neck there. A little side to side on the head. He's got uh, a lot of movement to transformation joints here for his paws and his elbows on all legs. You know, kind of a permanent crook there on the back leg. Dog leg, if you will. I like him a lot. Uh, he's very, very, very cool. Uh, and again, this is just a recolor of their excellent uh, sort of masterpiece, masterpiece Ravage that they released a while back. Um, this is very nice. I like this one a lot. This is one of my, my favorite little third party pieces here. He's always on my desk, keeping me company. Kind of like, oh, hi, do you see me waving? I'm waving. Hello, I'm waving. Okay, so shattered glass seems like a very specific lore for a very specific Transformer fan, or fans. How did you come by these figures? And more importantly, were they worth it? Let's start with these two chunky Hasbro boys. Optimus and Ratchet come in a two-pack available from Hasbro Pulse. They are $49.99. 
And I think that's actually a decent price for what you get. Sure, maybe that's not an ideal price, but do recall that both of these guys are retools or recolors of existing figures in the current War for Cybertron line from Hasbro. Regular Earthrise Prime retails for 50 bucks all by himself at your local store. He does come with a trailer, but this one doesn't. Ratchet was previously an Amazon exclusive in a two-pack with another exclusive. So you're essentially getting a recolored leader class figure, but swapping out the trailer for a deluxe class figure in exclusive deco. Totally <coughs> worth it. That brings us to the third party guy here, Ocular Max's Duck Hat. I picked him up a while ago at a sale from tfsource.com for around 50 bucks. It appears that he may be out of print now, which means if you don't already have one, you could be out of luck. Or you could search him out on eBay and pony up $120 for him, which I do not recommend. Remember, cheap ass. If you can find him for 60 bucks or less, do it. He's worth it, if you're down with the Jaguar Clown. All right, folks, if you have a hankering for some shattered glass goodness, head on over to Hasbro Pulse and hook yourself up with those two beefy bros. And if you like your ravage with the sight of Lolcat, eh, well, you may be out of luck, unless the internet gods smile on you. Well, thank you, folks, for sticking around with our nonsense. We appreciate you. But I'd appreciate you more if you smash that like button down there, <laughs> or subscribe. Uh, next time, we'll have more cool stuff from the Humans Collection, so tap that subscribe button if you want to be notified when we've got new videos up. And don't forget, coming up next month, we've got our look at female representation in collectibles and toys, uh, specifically the Humans Collection. Wait a second. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Why, I'm Shattered Glass You. Can't you tell by my cool goatee? <laughs> right. Hi, folks. I'm waving. Can you see that I'm waving? <laughs>